Trevon, we know you're a very busy woman. You have, you have a very successful company called Source, which exports design goods. You've got five children. Um, why did you decide to take up this challenge of editing BC51? It's an absolute honor to be asked. And uh, when Sabine phoned me, I was like, wow, fantastic, very, very exciting. And, you know, I've, I love magazines and I love architecture. So the fact that this was an architectural issue in particular was very exciting for me. Okay, and, and tell us about the experience. What did you enjoy most? What, what were the challenges? What did you find difficult? I loved meeting people and, you know, to sit with Pierce Hornipool for a couple of hours and really find out about his approach to architecture, his philosophy in life and all of those sort of things to, um, to be able to interview Rick Joy, who's been a hero of mine for you know, a very long time be able to learn how a magazine actually works, you know, although we, we've read a lot of them and we've done little bits and pieces, we've never actually understood the, the whole sort of spectrum of how the process happens. And so to sit with Etienne and to kind of shape the way something might look and uh, yeah, all, all of that, it, it, it was the learning side of it and the people side of it I think that was, has been the most interesting aspect of it for me. Trevin, which feature in VC51 was your favourite? Um, you know, it was. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know if there is one that's my favourite. I wanted to to say, well, a fantasy fueled sort of Gaudi esque uh, work in progress that's been going on for years and it'll continue going on for for years in Swaziland is still a work of architecture in, in my book. And that and a little um, cube house, a, a, an eco friendly cube house that uh, is. Um, very, very simply set in this incredible surroundings is as valid as the most adventurous and ambitious architectural project in the country, being Freedom Park. And so to show the two or all the 17 extremes in all different directions was important. And I, I'm, I'm thrilled with the way they've all come out. And to work with Duke on a lot of different projects is, is, is just a joy. And it's been a great adventure to, to go after these different projects and to sort of uh, you know, get our vision through in the way we've, we've pictured it. VC51 is a very strong architecture focus. Um, we're curious, who, who's your favorite architect? <laughs> I suppose, and you know, it's, it's what I've said in, 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 the, in the mag, is that um, an architect that I'm particularly very, very interested in is Rick Joy, who's an uh, American architect who just views the process of building and of designing and of living in spaces from a very sensitive, personal, um, way and a very sensual way. He's not necessarily the most flashy or the most you know, extreme architect, but it, for me he's real and he's soulful and his buildings are very beautiful and very quiet and very integrated into the landscape. But at the same time, like, almost like a piece of sculpture, so beautiful, so precise. On a totally different um, vibe, you, you recently launched a collection of homeware items in Baldwin stores. Mm -hmm. And we're just curious, how has the response been to the Welcome Home range? It's been phenomenal actually, very, very, very positive and to have the backing of Boardman through that process has been fantastic. So we've just, we're about to launch our new summer collection at the end of November and the idea is very much a long-term commitment to the idea of establishing South African designers as brands um, with the same credibility as the international brands that, that Boardman stock. So rather than just generic fashionable, trendy products. You're actually establishing Di Marshall and Gwenya Glass and Tanisha Shapiro as brands that have the same weight as Noritake or Oxo or, you know, one of those. Trevin, you know the local design scene very, very well. Um, I know it's probably a very difficult question, but do you have any favorites in terms of South African designers? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, our, as a company, we have a database of 450, I think it is, suppliers that we work with. But there are so many people that I really am passionate about that there isn't one person. I mean, the, the, you know, Gregor Jenkin is somebody who I've worked with very closely and he's a very good friend and from the outset of my, my work here and from the outset pretty much of his, his career too, we've worked very closely. So all of his export goes through our company and we've, we've developed his international retail um, relationships. But there are so many people, Ceramic Matters, Heath Nash, Bronze Age, uh, you know, the list goes on and on of, of people that I love working with and that I've become friends with as well as you know, the, having a business relationship with them. So it would be very difficult to, to, to say that one person stood out from absolutely everybody.
I'm sure you're very tired by the stage of the game, but if you were asked to edit the magazine again, would you say yes, or would you just run away and say, no, I, I, don't, I can't do it again? Um, I need a little holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would love to do it again. Um, it's uh, I would try and make more more space in the in, so that it, because the hours have been very long, as I say, with all of the other work. So it's a, it's about that. It's about getting that balance. But as a, as an experience, it's been absolutely fantastic. And yes, I would definitely I would definitely do it again. <laughs>